Hi, this is Martin from Imagineer Systems. Today we're going to be looking at how to track in Mocha AE and export out to Motion 5. Now to clarify, we are using the standalone version of Mocha AE, not the one that ships with Adobe After Effects. The reason for that is Adobe's bundled version only exports out to After Effects and not the other applications. The standalone version, which you can upgrade to from the Adobe version, contains both the ability to export out to After Effects as well as Final Cut Pro, Motion and Boris FX plugins. So with that in mind, let's get down to work. Here I've shot a piece of footage with a GoPro HD Hero 2 and I want to make it just a little bit more sinister by adding a few more elements. So I'm going to add a stream of smoke coming out of this little box here and I'm going to replace the sign to something a little bit more interesting. So let's now start with just tracking this box element for motion. So I'm just going to drag the timeline to the end because we can start with a nice clean shot of this little element here. And I'll zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to draw a simple shape using the X-Blind tool. So I'm just going to draw a shape around that box, like so. I'll just turn off my surface so we can see that. So once we've got that shape, this whole red area will be tracked. So I'm going to up my minimum percentage of pixels used. So I'm going to put it up to 99% because it's a small element and I want to make sure that we get as much information as possible. I'm also going to change the input channel to auto channel because we've got a lot of similar luminance values around here. I want to make sure that Mocha chooses the best color channel to use while it's tracking. I'm also going to turn off shear because we only really care about the translation scale and rotation for this particular object. Now when tracking it's often useful to actually turn on your grid so you can see how the track is going. I'm now going to return on my surface and just make that grid a little bit bigger so when I zoom out I can actually see how well it's tracking in the footage. So we'll just zoom back out again just using the Z key like so. And now because I'm at the end of the footage I'm going to start tracking backwards. And away we go. So you can see how the grid is readjusting itself trying to find where that shape is going. And you can see how there's a rotation in the footage so we're getting this nice sort of twist as we go along as the camera moves up in space. So now when we drag backwards and forwards we can see how that shape is changing over time. So I'm going to start with this element and we can now export this out to Motion. I'm first going to name my layer. It's always a very good idea to name your layers. I'm just going to call this one Box because that's what it is. And I'm going to come down to Export Tracking Data. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose Motion Basic Transform. You can see a lot of different options here. We've got the After Effects standard ones. We've got Boris Effects plugins, Final Cut and Motion. In this case, I only care about the basic transform because we're only looking at that translation scale and rotation. So I'm going to click on that one and I'm going to choose Save. So we can save that out. I've already got one saved here, but I'm going to click it again and call it Box and just save that. It's asking me if I want to overwrite and I do. So I'm going to now move over to Motion so we can apply this data in the shot. So over in Motion 5, we now have a few options. We can either choose to open the project file we've saved as its own project, or if you've already got a project open, which is probably the most normal procedure, we just grab our export that we made and drag it into our project. So we can see that from the export, we've got this blue surface object. So I'm just going to turn off that surface and then we can start working with this information. So the base clip is already brought in with the export and I'm going to now bring in an element to use this tracking data on. So we've got this smoke element. I'm going to drag it into the group like so. Now it's a bit big at this stage so I'm just going to move it into position where we want it on top of this box and I'm going to adjust a few of the properties. First of all, I'm going to come down to my anchor point and move that anchor point down to the base of the smoke. I'm then going to come over to the inspector and under properties I'm going to bring the scale down just a little bit so that it fits that a bit better. 
I'm also going to bring the opacity down to about 80% and I'm going to change my blend mode to light wrap just to make that blend in a little bit better around the edges. Now once we have this in place you can see at the moment that it's not actually stuck to anything. So this is where our tracking information comes in handy. So how we want to apply this is under our library we want to go to the behaviors and then come to motion tracking group and choose match move. So I'm just going to drag match move to my smoke layer like so. So now if we move across to inspector you can see the match move effect is applied to our smoke. By default it will choose the base clip but we want to be able to use the surface layer instead. So I'm just going to select my surface layer and drag it in the timeline on top of my match move. Now if we select our smoke layer you can see the match move has the source as the surface. Now this is very important if I drag now you can see how that smoke layer is not actually sitting on the surface correctly. This is because it's only attached to the source material and not mimicking it. So we just come to our transform and say mimic source and then that will actually follow along correctly. Now the more astute among you will have noticed that there isn't actually a reflection in the water for this smoke. So let's actually fix that now. I'm going to select my smoke layer and press command D to duplicate it and we'll just uh, twirl up that smoke layer so we don't have to see it anymore and I'm going to call this one smoke reflection like so. Now if we come over to our properties for this layer we can double click our rotation and just put in 180 like so. Once we have this we can then start to affect it so that it actually starts reflecting in the water. I'm going to move it down a little bit like so and then you can see here how it will move along correctly and look like it's in the water. We're obviously going to change some properties here but at the first of all we want to make sure that it doesn't go into the bank here so we're going to do a little bit of a cheat to actually mask off this area and have a fall off in the reflection. To do this we want to create an image mask so in my smoke reflection I'm going to right click and say add image mask. Now at the moment this image mask is empty and we need to create a mask for it. So I'm going to come up to the pen tool here and draw a very basic mask around like so. Now I'm going to feather off this mask a bit like that and we'll just move it up a little bit. Now you can see where I've drawn the mask it's actually placed it in the timeline so I need to drag that mask back to frame one like so. So once we have this mask we need to actually apply it to our image mask. So we can just drag that shape on top of the image mask and then that will actually fall off correctly in the smoke reflection. Now if you actually drag the timeline you'll see actually that this mask is staying in place. So we need to apply the same information that we did in the reflection and the smoke layer. So I'm just going to copy the match move and paste it onto the mask layer. Now it'll automatically jump back to its original position so I'm just going to drag that back down to where it's supposed to be. You'll see how that motion information is actually dragging along with it as I do it. Make sure that you don't have your match move selected otherwise it will actually affect the match move animation and not the original object. So we've got that fall off in place now and you'll see how that match move is now following along with the mask as well as the other object. So all it's left to do now is actually fix up the reflection part so it looks a bit more like it's actually reflecting in the water and not just sitting there. To fix up that I'm just going to do a very basic blend mode so I'm going to select my reflection object and we'll bring the opacity down a little bit more and I'm going to choose soft light maybe bring up the opacity just a bit more and we can see how now that will actually sit a little bit better when we play it back. 
I might even reduce that opacity slightly more, because we only need to get a very subtle effect there. Like so. So, now that we have uh, this smoke done, we want to now replace the sign so that it looks a little bit more sinister than just a dog on lead area. So we're going to do a different track for this back in Mocha. So let's go over and do that now. Back in Mocha, we can now track the sign. So I'm just going to turn off my box layer, and I'll hide the grid so we can look at the footage a bit. So here's our sign. I'm going to do the same procedure as I did with the box. I'm going to draw a shape around the area I want to track. So let's go up to our X-Blind tool and draw a very basic box around that sign. So I'll just bring that in a little bit tighter. You don't have to be too accurate here, you can just keep it reasonably rough. And I'm going to turn on perspective in this case because we do have a bit of a perspective shift and it's also moving out of the shot. So I'll turn my grid back on so I can look at what I'm doing. And let's start tracking backwards. Let's just name our layer first, I'll call it sign, and let's go. So track backwards. So as it tracks out of the shot, you're going to see that eventually the tracker is going to go a little bit haywire because it can't find any more information to work with. So the way we fix that, I'm just going to come back to where I last saw the sign, so let's just zoom in a little bit. And when we start to lose the sign, about here, I'm going to come up to my layer properties and just cut off the layer at that point. In fact, I'll come back one more because we only need the last point and cut it off there. Now we won't see the rest of the layer apart from that part of the track. So if we just zoom back out again, we can see how that's looking. So that grid is tracking on smoothly to the shot. And then it disappears where we've cut it off in the layer properties. So now we can go ahead and paint a sign uh, to replace this dog on lead area sign in the footage. So here we are in Photoshop. I've just brought in the last frame of that piece of footage and I've gone ahead and already painted out my sign. So I've painted out the areas that I don't want in the image and I've added in a new monster to be in the lake called the Zomboctopus, which is, you know, a real thing that lives in Australia. And we now need to just put that sign back into motion. So I'm going to turn off my background layers here so we can see how that sign's floating in space with this alpha in full dimensions of the original frame. Now this is just one way to get this piece of footage into uh, motion, but you can also paint a normal sized sign and then use a distortion tool to actually insert it into place. But in this case I'm going to show you how to do this alpha method. So I've already saved out this frame, so let's go back over to Mocha AE and show you how to set up that before we export it. Back in Mocha AE, we need to now set up our surface to export out to motion. Normally what we would do is actually align the surface to the object we want to replace, such as this sign here, and then we would export that corner information out to motion. So if I was to insert a clip here, for example, just to preview, we can see how that surface information will move along with the sign in place. But because I've gone into Photoshop and actually painted in a sign and used the complete dimensions of that frame, I need to set up the tracking information the same way. So I'm going to move to the end frame where I painted in my sign in Photoshop. I'll just turn off that insert clip preview now because we don't need to see that. And we need to come over to a line surface and click it. What this will do is actually blow up the surface to full dimensions just like we painted out the frame inside Photoshop. Now when I drag the timeline you'll see that surface moves relative to the change I made on that frame. So now we can export out this information to motion and it will come in correctly with that particular frame. So I'm going to now export the tracking data. I'm going to choose motion corner pin because it is a corner, four corner pin distortion. And again I'm going to save that file and I'm going to call it sign. So I'm going to save that and then we can go back over to motion. 
back in motion, we can now bring in our sign information. So I'm just going to do a bit of cleanup here. Let's just call this group one in the timeline the smoke layer. So smoke group, like so. And I'm just going to twirl that up so we don't have to look at it. I'm then going to drag in the sign that we exported out of Mocha. So bring in that information. And we've got all the surface information like we did in the smoke layer. The only difference here is you can see how this information has been clipped to this frame here. This is because we did that layer adjustment inside Mocha to make sure that we didn't see the rest of the information. So let's just call this group sign track, like so. And I'm going to turn off the base clip because we've already got the base clip uh, previously when we did the previous import. So I'm going to delete that base clip, like so. And we'll just drag the timeline so we can make sure that that surface is coming in at the right spot, which it looks like it is. So now I can just turn off that surface because I don't need to see it anymore. So now we can bring in our insert. So we've got the sign insert here that I created inside Photoshop. And I'm going to drag that into the sign track group. And you can see how it's just floating in space here at the moment because it doesn't have any match move information on it. So we need to go back up to our library, choose the motion tracking group again, and select match move. So I'm going to drag that onto the insert, like so. And I'm going to drag the surface, like we did last time, on top of that match move object. So now if we go back over to Inspector, and we look at our behaviours, we've got the surface in place for that sign insert. In this case though, because it is a four-point corner transform, we need to change it to four corners. And you'll see that pop down on the surface there. Now you can see it's floating a little bit here, so we will need to actually clip it the same way as the surface. So I'm going to select my sign insert and just move that to match where the surface starts so we don't see it at the beginning of our footage. Now if we drag the timeline, we'll see that is actually sitting in place with where the surface begins and not coming up uh, at the beginning of our footage here. So that's how you use Mocha AE to export out to Motion 5 for transform and corner pin information. Now what we haven't covered today is Roto. The main thing with Roto inside Motion is, is that Mocha AE does not support the shape format such as the splines inside Motion. So you would only be able to get matte information into uh, Motion via either rendering out mats from a product such as Mocha Pro, which is our professional version of Mocha, or actually exporting out shape data to After Effects or Final Cut and rendering those files out to mats to use as image masks as well. If you have any questions about today's tutorial, please visit our website and check out the forum at forum.imagineersystems.com. This has been Martin Brennand for Imagineer Systems.